Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining me today. This morning, we are going to do a few things. We are going to talk about two of my very favorite subjects. We are going to give away two COVID Sucks prize packages. Tune in at the end to see how to win one of those. And then finally, we are going to right now play a game. I'm going to show you a picture of something in my house. You need to guess what's inside. Let's take a look at that right now. All right. Any guesses of what we're looking at right here? If your guess is Mr. Noodles, you are wrong. Man, it sure looks like it, but appearances can be deceiving. That is part of my comic book collection. I love comic books. Marvel especially is my favorite. I just love all of those superheroes and their stories. Uh, my parents were so great. Now let me buy all these comics. They probably spent thousands and thousands of dollars on all these comic books. And now that's my retirement fund. Right now, I mean, these comics are probably worth $86, $87. But one day they're going to skyrocket. Maybe this beauty is going to go up in price. Look at this. This is the original Infinity Gauntlet issue number one. And you better believe I've got the whole series of that. If you want to buy it, call me now. Operators are standing by. We even have all these cool figurines. I mean, it is great. And now I've loved that they've been turned into movies so I can watch these guys hit the screen with my kids. I was watching them all with Silas, but I was just taking too long. And so he's gone ahead and watched them without me. But don't worry. I've seen them all already before. I love superheroes. Something interesting about superheroes, though, is that superheroes actually imply that there is a problem, don't they? That something's amiss, that something's wrong, that somebody needs rescuing, and that's why they appear. And we see that in our world, don't we? I mean, it doesn't matter where you look or what age you've lived in, there's always been trouble. There has always been problems. Uh, I mean, crime, injustice, uh, things that have happened and have never been solved that remain a mystery today. I mean, there's all of this turmoil in our world. And one of the questions is, when will this end? Where are the heroes that we need to put all of this to rest? You know, this isn't a new problem. It goes all through history, even back to the very beginning pages of the Bible. Let's talk about the first two brothers, for example. Cain and Abel. I mean, these two brothers had to be very best friends because there was just no other options for them. And we're told that each of them brings a gift to God, that Cain brings uh, some, a gift from the fields and that Abel brings uh, first fruits from his flock, maybe a baby lamb or something like that. And for whatever reason, God approves of Abel's offering, but not of Cain's. And Cain gets really upset. I mean, he is ticked at God and at his brother. And so he has a little talk with his brother about it, and then God has a talk with Cain about it. Let me tell you what God says to him. It's from Genesis chapter 4, and it says this. Sin is crouching at your door. He's talking to Cain. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. But listen to what happens next. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. So Cain takes his brother out to the field and kills him there. And we see that thing not just in that verse, but again and again through the Bible and again and again in real life. Anger, jealousy, greed, violence, abuse, all sorts of things like that. And the question is, why? You know, in that verse, God uses for the first time the word sin. Sin means to miss the mark, to fall short, to be a day late and a dollar short. I mean, close but no cigar. It means to not measure up to the standard that has been set. For us, that means that we don't measure up to the standard of perfection that God has set. Remember, we talked a couple weeks ago about having a perfect God and an imperfect people. That's the issue that we're wrestling here. That's the problem that Cain had. God came to him and said, listen, you've got to master your sin, but he doesn't. He can't. And we can't either, which is why we just keep seeing this again and again and again. Violence and mistrust, dishonor, jealousy, greed, all these different types of things where people get hurt. You know, it's hard to find a hero. 
There's some heroes in the Bible. Maybe you think of Abraham. Abraham's a guy who comes to mind. He's a hero for Christians and for Jews and for Muslims. I mean, that unites a lot of people really around Abraham. And he was the father of God's chosen people. It's a great guy. I mean, there is that time where he sleeps with his servant and has a son with him and then later on uh, kicks the servant and the son out from under his protection. But we try not to dwell on that part of the story. Forget about Abraham. What about King David? I mean, David is a king to all sorts of people, a hero to all sorts of people as well. And I mean, that guy is incredible. He's the shepherd boy who slays the giant. He is this poet. He is this incredible warrior. He's the best king ever. Uh, but then there is that time where he sleeps with a married woman and then uh, she gets pregnant. He tries to cover it up, but he can't. So he has the real husband killed and... Yeah, okay, so he's not a perfect example either. I mean, he's a hero, but he still doesn't quite measure up. You know, if you think of the New Testament, a lot of people would say maybe that Paul, or his name earlier was Saul, maybe he would fit the category of a hero. And he's a missionary to the world. I mean, he writes more than half of the New Testament and just spreads the gospel all over the place, telling people everywhere about Jesus. Of course, there was that period of time where he was actually trying to stop Christianity and, you know, kind of supervised and approved of Christians being killed. But other than that, I mean, pretty good stuff. Man, it's hard to find a hero even looking at the Bible. So what about kind of more modern situations? Uh, I remember just two years ago actually reading about in Victoria on Vancouver Island, they wanted to tear down a statue of our first prime minister, John A. Macdonald. And so that did happen. They took him down because sure, I mean, he's heroic in being the first prime minister of Canada. But then uh, there was a lot of situation with his involvement with residential school. So he kind of loses that hero status. And we're seeing that around the world right now is heroes, statues, monuments are just falling down, being torn down. In fact, I read this morning about a protest and they're gathering signatures to have a statue of Gandhi taken down. I mean, he's a pretty peaceful guy. He's known as this peaceful protester, but it's just so hard to find a hero. Don't even get me started on celebrities. I mean, celebrities are heroes and then zeros, depending on whatever they text or say or tweet. And most of them are heroes because they can really throw the ball or sing nicely, but maybe not because of what they have accomplished. It is just so hard to find a hero. Of course, I know at home you're thinking, well, what about Jesus? Let's talk about Jesus. I mean, it, he's certainly the hero of the Bible. It's interesting, though, that he's never called that. They never used the word in there that he is the hero, um, but he certainly is. But instead of being called a hero, Isaiah and Jesus refer to him not as a hero, but as a servant. Let me read one of those passages for you from Isaiah 42. It says this, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. God is clearly talking about a hero here. I mean, I love how he talks about the chosen one, the one that God delights in. I like how he says that he's going to get the job done, that he won't get discouraged or falter until he brings about justice. I mean, what a hero Jesus is going to be. You know, if you look at any superhero movie, the heroes do a lot of great stuff, but they also do a lot of damage. I mean, they are smashing through buildings. They're throwing cars. I mean, parks are being ripped up and all sorts of other things are going on. Sure, they help some people, but they also destroy a lot of stuff. That's not the kind of hero that Jesus is. I mean, Jesus is a much gentler kind of hero. In that passage we just read from Isaiah, it says that a bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he won't snuff out. I mean, Jesus is coming not to do more damage, but to actually fix 
the damage, to undo the damage that already exists, not to add to it. I think about your own life right now. Maybe you or your social circle, your friend network. How many bruised reeds do you know right now? People who are just wounded. People who are wounded because of things that have happened to them in their past or maybe things that are happening in their house right now. We know that during COVID that incidences of abuse have just gone way up. Maybe you know friends that are bruised uh, just emotionally, that they're just uh, under the weight of some depression or anxiety and that's just kind of really weighing down on them. Maybe you know people who are just bruised financially. They're struggling. They've lost their job. They've lost a source of employment. Some bills are piling up and they just don't know how they're going to overcome that challenge, that obstacle. I like how he talks about a smoldering wick. He will not snuff out. I mean, just picture that flame that's just on the edge of going out. Who do you know where their faith is like that, where they are just struggling so hard right now? Isaiah says, Jesus is coming and Jesus is the hero. And he's not going to tell those people, hey, you don't have enough faith for me. or You're not praying hard enough for me. You're not believing it like it's really happening right now. Well, Jesus actually comes to like fan that flame into a roaring fire. He actually comes to fix that reed, to repair it, to restore it. Jesus is a hero who comes and he has the power. He's going to get the job done. There's no question about that. But he's not going to do that by incurring more damage. He's actually going to do that by restoring things and making things the way that they were meant to be in the first place anyway. Something that I like about heroes and superheroes and comic books is I like their origin stories. How did this all come to be? How did they get that power? You know, there, there's some, some of the classics, right? Like... A uh, Spider-Man gets bitten by this radioactive spider and then bam, he's got all of this power or Bruce Banner gets blasted with some a gamma radiation and now whenever he gets angry, oh, he just turns into the Hulk. He gets his power from his anger and that radiation. A guy like Iron Man gets his power from this uh, incredible suit he's built. Green Lantern gets it from a ring. Uh, some superheroes have their superpowers because there are aliens, like Superman comes along from another planet and he's got all these powers. What about Jesus? Where does Jesus measure up there? Because the Bible tells us, I mean, he's got power. If he's going to do everything Isaiah is talking about, about bringing justice to the earth, he's going to need some incredible, incredible power. So where does he get that power from? Isaiah 42, again, is just such a neat passage because it actually talks about Jesus being God. Not just God, but also God as part of the Trinity. It talks about the Father, and it talks about the servant who is Jesus. And it talks about the Spirit being on him. I mean, right there we see this cool snapshot of this hero who's coming, and it's God. And who is God? Well, he's this Trinity, this God that is beyond comprehension, who exists three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And even though he's God, even though Jesus is coming to earth, it says he's not going to put on a big show. Uh, he's not going to demand that there's parades. He's not going to have a lineup to do signatures. You know, wait in line. You pay five bucks. You get your photo of me and I'll autograph it for you. That's actually a pretty good idea, but he doesn't do that. Let me read these words for you one more time. It says this. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. Jesus isn't here as a celebrity, right? I mean, he's not just giving out high fives and, and pounding it with people. He's here for a reason. He's here with a mission. Jesus describes that mission himself. If you look at Luke 19, he says this, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to do something. He came on purpose. He came with a task. He came with a mission that he's trying to accomplish. And he isn't going to do that with a magic hammer. And he's not going to do that with spidey strength. And he's not going to do that by getting really angry and smashing some stuff. He's more powerful than all that. I mean, the Bible says that Jesus is so powerful because he's God. He has the power to do absolutely anything. In Isaiah, 
Isaiah actually writes four songs about this servant who's going to come. The first one is in Isaiah 42, but I want to turn to uh, the one that's in Isaiah 52, 53. And just read a little bit about that because it talks about how this hero who's coming, how this servant hero is going to save the world. Let me read these words for you. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him in low esteem. Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus is definitely the hero of the story. He is absolutely the hero of the Bible, but he's a different kind of hero. He doesn't come down here and bust some heads and crack some skulls and take some names and kick some butt, even though he does do all those things. But he does it in such a different way. You know, I, it's so fascinating in that passage from Isaiah, it says that we look at Jesus and say, oh man, God must have hated that guy. I mean, look at everything that God allowed to happen to him. But it's actually all the opposite of that. That Jesus allows all those things to happen to him. And it's through that that he rescues us. It's through all those things that he saves us. It's through his death that he pays for the penalty of sin and beats it. It's through his resurrection that he beats the power of death. I mean, he absolutely beats the power of sin, death, and the devil, but he does it in such a different way than anyone would have expected. You know, there's such a major difference there between Jesus and superheroes that we read about in the comics. I mean, first of all, Jesus is a real historical figure and those other superheroes aren't. The other one is this. In those comics, we see this battle between good and evil and you just never know which side might win as they butt heads again and again and again. But in the Bible, we absolutely know. In real life, we absolutely know that Jesus wins. That Jesus is the hero. That Jesus comes out victorious. It looked like he lost, but appearances can be deceiving. And Jesus rises again with all power, authority, and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the hero, the Savior. He's the one that we needed. You know, it's interesting that the Bible calls him the servant. Again and again, he's called a servant. That's not just something I'm making up. Isaiah says it. In fact, Jesus says it himself. Jesus doesn't come to sell a lot of t-shirts and give away some signatures. He doesn't come for celebrity status. He comes to serve. Let me read these words for you. This is from Jesus. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus comes as a servant. Jesus comes to serve who, though? Well, Jesus serves the Father by doing what the Father wants. He says, I'm just saying what the Father told me to say. I'm just doing what the Father told me to do. So he's serving his heavenly Father, but he also comes and serves us. You know, in the Lutheran church, our services in the hymnal are called the divine service. Because it's God who comes and serves us. It's Jesus who comes and serves us. And he serves us by forgiving our sins every time we confess. And it's Jesus who serves us as he welcomes us to baptism and through that into his family. It's Jesus who serves us at the Lord's Supper. It's Jesus who serves us again and again and again and again. You know, it's so clear that our world is broken. But our world doesn't need any more heroes. It already has the one and only hero it's ever needed in Jesus. Our world is broken, but it doesn't need more heroes. It needs more servants. The church 
doesn't need any more heroes. It needs more servants. People who go out and love and care for and feed and serve and wash and visit and shop for and, and drive to appointments. People who will serve other people. You know that bruised reed person? You know that person who's just struggling so much right now? They need you to go serve them. Don't say somebody should. You know you're the hero servant that they need. That flickering wick friend of yours who's just barely hanging on, they need you, a hero servant, to come and to serve them, not to rescue them. Church, whenever we go in and try and rescue somebody, we are a lot like the Incredible Hulk and we just do more smashing, more damage than we actually do helping. You're not there to save someone, to rescue someone. You are there to serve someone, to serve them like Jesus by loving them and sacrificing for them. Well, that sounds great, but I don't have the time. I know that's why it's a sacrifice. Man, do you know how much that's going to cost me? I know. That's the sacrifice. But the world doesn't need more heroes, and it doesn't need any more celebrities. It needs more servants. People to love and seek out and care for and protect and advocate for those people who are bruised and hurting and flickering. You know, we have this superpower inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. God himself at work living in and through us into the world. Sometimes we talk about that as being the hands and the feet of Jesus in the world. I want to read this uh, from Romans 1 as Paul describes this incredible power in us. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Paul here says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. See, part of the gospel is this, our brokenness. Just like the story of a superhero implies that there's a super problem, the story of the gospel, the story of Jesus coming implies that we needed help, that we needed rescuing. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of that because the story's not about me. It's about Jesus, the one and only Savior of the world. And Jesus comes because I was lost, but he found me. And I was dead in my sins, but he gave me life. That I was the enemy of God, but he reconciled me to God. The story of the gospel is that I was in desperate need, and Jesus came and met that need. That Jesus came and beat the enemies of sin, death, and the devil for me. And we don't need another hero because Jesus has already done all of it. Jesus, the original superhero who came to serve and save the world. The good news in that church, remember I said earlier that appearances can be deceiving. Part of the good news in this is maybe you don't look like a superhero. Maybe you don't feel like a superhero. But you have this superpower of the gospel at work in you. You have this superpower of the Holy Spirit who lives in you now, lives and breathes in you and promises to speak through you and to call you back to the gospel. And that God promises to protect you with his very own power. So you don't have to wait till you come across some special hammer or ring to give you power. You don't have to hope and pray that a radioactive spider will bite you. You don't have to wonder if maybe you could go near some gamma radiation and get blasted. Don't do that. You've already got all the power you need because God is at work in you and through you as you go to serve the world. Okay, I said that we would give away two COVID sucks prize packages. Let me show you what we got here. Okay, this is a superhero themed prize pack. So we have got two bags of Doritos here. These are Wonder Woman inspired. This one's sweet, chilly heat. And then we've got just regular nacho flavor. We have got some uh, Transformers you can build. They're superheroes. We got some Lip Smacker here. It's Black Panther edition Red Bull. Makes you feel like you got wings. That's cool. Super Sour Patch Kids. You have to be super powerful to eat those because they are super salty. And then I almost don't want to give these away, but I'm going to. We've got some limited edition Paw Patrol Egos. 
Lego my ego. These are gonna be so good. It's requiring super strength to give them away. Here's how you enter your name into our draw. You can go to our Facebook page. You can like or share. Share's best of all this message. In the comment section, you could leave your favorite superhero and we can talk a little bit about comparing different heroes. Church, don't wait for your spidey sense to start tingling. The world needs you now to go and serve them through your words and through your actions as you live out this gospel and tell them about Jesus Christ, the one and only Savior of the world. In his mighty name, amen.